Hi, I'm Jane Verity. I was the business manager at the Fillmore East. I started working there in September of 1968. The Fillmore opened in March of 1968. So, Jane, how did you get your job? Uh, right before I got my job at the Fillmore, I was uh, graduated college and were going to be an accountant. I went off to study transcendental meditation in Lake Tahoe uh, with Maharishi. There I met Kip Cohn, who was the general manager of the Fillmore. When we got back from our month-long vacation, they needed a business manager at the Fillmore, and Kip asked me if I wanted the job. Right. So Kip was the one that hired you? Yes. So what did you do at the Fillmore? What was your job? My job at the Fillmore was to pay the acts, pay all the people, take care of the building, all kinds of different jobs. And Mostly money and coordinated departments on people. So tell us the first time you met Bill. Oh, God. Could we stop it? Because I don't know how to say. Because I'm getting. Start with the first time. I don't, I don't even remember. I'm not sure I remember the first time. That's what's real hard about. Uh, uh, I had been working at the Fillmore for about three weeks and had no heard nothing except Bill Graham's stories of ranting and raving and screaming and yelling. And when he did come to New York finally, he was the most charming, warm man one could imagine, except for his screaming, yelling, ranting and raving. <laughs> uh, there was. There was a lot of memories that I have from the Fillmore days. I think the most consistent and constant memory is the family attitude that Bill gave to all of us. It truly was a Fillmore family, from the ushers to the security people to the stage managers to everybody who worked there. There was truly a feeling of ha making something happen since the music was just beginning in New York City at the time. There were so many wonderful musical happenings at the Fillmore. The Janis Joplin when we almost had to cancel it in a snowstorm. The evenings when the Grateful Dead played and it was 10 o'clock in the morning when we opened the doors to sunshine. Uh, when the Who got arrested on the stage. When next door here there was a fire in a supermarket. And off-duty policemen came up on the stage to announce a fire. Roger Daltrey and Peter Townsend hit him they all got arrested, the show got canceled, thousands of people were milling on the streets with nowhere to go at 11.30 at night. But because Bill felt everybody had missed such a great musical event, he got the group to come back about two months later. We billed it as the triumph return of The Who. It was the most wonderful show we had. There was a week when we did Tommy here, and we also did it at the Metropolitan Opera House. We had a week of Crosby, Stills, Nash and & Young, and it goes on and on and on from there. Do you remember any specific, like, backstage incidents or any... Well, we had a front stage incident where at Ratner's next door, where Jerry Rubin hit Bill, which is an infamous story, uh -huh. uh, because Bill was talking to a cop who used to... We used to have some cops come and take our box office to the bank. And they said hello to Bill. Jerry called him a pig for talking to the cops. It was a very volatile day. You have to understand, all the marches were going on in those days. Uh, everybody was very high. Emotions were running very high. Uh, backstage, Bill ran a very tight ship. He loved the artist. And despite any problems that were going on with the act or nonsense, the show always got on. Well, I worked from the Fillmore from September of 68 to when it closed in June of 71. I think anybody who worked here has a, an array of wonderful experiences. It was such a growing, creative time in the business. When there were no rules set, it was not big business. The music counted for more than anything else. The discovery of music, 
the acts from Led Zeppelin to Humble Pie to Mountain to Santana. Uh, it was every week it was something else going on. Hi, Bill. I'm so glad you finally went for a tribute and allowed all of us to our, express our sincere appreciation to you for all the things that you have done for us. You are one of the most loving, caring individuals I have ever known. Thanks for all the music and the love. <laughs> 